retrieval tactics any time that they are available instead of being constrained to the limitations of when the service is available. Students will receive email notifications about their policy inquiry daily. They also have the opportunity to download our mobile phone app where they can receive notifications inside the app. The students can uh, go to the locker system. They can swipe their ID card um, or they can enter the PIN number that they received in their email notification. If they have downloaded and registered for the mobile phone app, they also have the opportunity to use the PIN code from there a QR barcode that can be scanned at the locker bench, and there is a Bluetooth remote unlock feature inside the app as well. In 2012, when we began this project, uh, we were averaging about 19 to 20,000 pack packages a, a month. Uh, currently, we're at uh, averaging 50,000 packages a month, uh, with last September, October being over 100,000 packages in the days that we did. Uh, we used to do this by paper and handing packages out and long lines at each student post office. But when we went to the locker system, uh, it made it a, uh, a nicer flow for students to get packages. So as a student, I always have my phone on me. So the app makes it really easy to come into the mail room whenever. Just click a few buttons and the locker bank opens for me. And it's really useful because the locker banks are open 24-7. So the new app would uh, enhance the experience for the students uh, with growing technology and students want to be pick up packages faster, they, they want to be in, they want to be out, they have other things to do. So this app will tell the student where the package is, if the package is in the mail room or if the package is in the locker, which locker bank it's in. Um, when they go to the locker, they have multiple ways of picking up. They, there will be a feature where they don't have to touch the, the screen. They can actually just pick up the package using their phone. Uh, they also have a uh, pin code, uh, QR code that they can use or their ID number. So, some of the system capabilities, uh, we were able to search by student's name and package info. Uh, we could uh, re reserve a locker for a specific student from our desktop. We don't just have to go to the locker system. Um, the screen will let the student know where the package is. So if they go to locker bank one and they get a package, it'll tell them you have a package in locker bank five or in the mail room or wherever it goes. Um, Whenever, so the more of a management tool is that we get to see a diagram of the locker and we could just hover over the diagram of the locker and we can know which package is in which locker. Uh, the lockers are ADA compliant, so there is a, a function inside the system that it, we can mark ADA for a student if they need it. So if they're too short or if they're in a wheelchair or if they're too tall, which we do get. Um, we could put packages in specific lockers for them. Okay, and then uh, we could uh, flag packages in the system to be forwarded home or returned to sender. <coughs> okay, so the mobile app gives a lot of great uh, functions. Uh, we could uh, push notifications, so like if anybody sees uh, on their phone, like they have a message in their Instagram or in their Facebook, and they get the little number one or number two, that could happen on this, on this app as well. So as they get packages, they get to see how many packages without even opening the app. All right, the notification, you could use a PIN, a QR code, you could use your, your uh, ID number, all to open the door. Uh, there is a function within the app that they could just press a button and the door will pop open for them. Um, so the mobile app will also let the students see the tracking capability. So if we receive the package in one of our distribution hubs, they could see it on their phone. Okay, it's in the distribution hub. It's not in the student post office yet. And then uh, the mobile app will let the students know how many packages are in each locker bank. 
okay? So whenever when people think of mail, they think of letter mail and they think of boxes and stuff like that. But we do get other things. So can anyone tell me what the first <laughs> picture is? Huh? That, that is a coconut with a label on it, okay? Okay, so we get Halloween candy sent to us. The big one, that is a car fender. Okay, so we've, we've gotten a lot of stuff over the years. Some PG, some R-rated. We're going to keep this PG. Okay, um, so we, we get everything from one of the weirdest things we saw was a chainsaw come in for one of the students. We don't know what he was doing with it, but it's in his dorm room. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so allowing students to, with this capability, they've been ordering more and more. So this two pallets of boxes is for one student. Okay, it's for one student, yes. Okay, and yes, and it is all feminine products. Okay, so all of it. For one student? One student. <laughs> we don't ask questions. No. We just deliver the packages. Okay. So, yes. So a lot of th we get calls about a lot of things. Okay. So things we do not handle that we get called on on a weekly basis. Okay. So furniture and equipment moves, we don't handle. Food delivery, we do not take pizzas from one place to another for people. Okay. <laughs> Animals, we do not handle animals, okay? So when we get big cages of parakeets that are chirping and we do not handle that, okay? We call REHS and they can handle it, okay? And we do not do secret Santa gifts. We go through this every Christmas, okay? We get, we, we get calls, please deliver our secret Santa gifts. We do not do that, okay? But did you know that we work with Res Life throughout the year handling care packages for students, okay? We work with the Center for Adult Autism and employ four participants. Uh, we ship cremated remains. This is every week, okay? We pick them up from the morgue and we have to follow USPS regulation on how to ship cremated remains back to the family. Mm -hmm. uh, we have something called the drug run okay, where we pick up narcotics from the pharmacy and deliver them to the clinics. This is an everyday thing also. Okay, we transport urine and blood samples. Okay, so there are the, we have to follow regulation on, on how to do this. Okay, and then we deliver checks and mail to the Trenton prison every day for UBHC. Okay. <laughs> so some stats for the year. So last year we had a, a pretty record-breaking year. Well, we did uh, almost a half a million packages. We processed incoming mail, over two million pieces of incoming mail, not including the packages. Um, Walk-up customer service window, okay? So remember those eight people handling all those packages? Okay, they also handled almost 170,000 students walking up to the window. All right, uh, outgoing metered mail. 2.5 million pieces of meter mail that we bill back to the departments. This doesn't include all the mail that comes in that people put stamps on or they have their postage ready. Uh, staff and students went over how many, how many people we, we handle. Email inquiries. So we have a mail questions email for staff and students to email us with their problems. Okay, last year we handled almost 10,000 emails just for those. So we answer those, we have a metric that we answer within 24 hours, okay? And then uh, we maintain 25 daily routes with 800 stops. Any questions? I think you need to do that. <laughs> We're efficient. <laughs> So, okay, so the, how the system works. So when a package comes in and we put it in the system, that package will stay in the system for 72 hours, okay? After 72 hours, we take it out of the system and it sits behind 
a customer service window. Okay. okay? So uh, we have a pickup rate of 85% within the first two hours of putting a package into the locker. So we don't have many expired packages but that throughout the year. the student would say they're not technically locked out because I used to get some of the inquiries coming in mm -hmm. and they would say that they got locked out of their, I guess, I was wondering what they were referring to. So, okay, so we've witnessed this multiple times. Okay. okay, so they'll open the locker and get on their phone. Okay, and they close the locker. And don't take that package. Now they think they could go back and and open the locker again, but they can't. Okay. okay, the locker is now free locker because lockers are not assigned to each student. They're only basically rented by each student. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, so, so I'll give you an example with the parakeets. We don't know what's in the parakeets. So we don't know what they're traveling with, what, you know, what lab they need to go to. So we'll segregate the parakeets from the staff, okay, and then we'll call REHS. They will either come or they'll send a, send a lab tech to pick them up. We don't deliver them, we don't touch them. Mm -hmm. Same thing with insects or mice or snakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cop? What's next in terms of now in terms of next gen? Um, do you feel like your steps in capacity are easier? Or do you feel like um, there's going to be more in the future? Right. So, so here's what we're planning for. We're planning for package growth, but mail decline. So over the years, we've seen paper mail decline as packages grow. OK, so, so with that, we have to keep up with the trend uh, and make sure we have enough lockers and enough staff to handle handle packages. And then if there's student growth, then we have to plan for that as well. Frank, can you talk a minute about how you actually do manage these efficiencies? How do you handle all those emails and response so quickly? Okay. I think it's beneficial to everybody. So, ma so mail questions, it, it doesn't go to one person. It goes to the whole management team. So depending on where they are, if they're in Newark, or if they're in Piscataway, if they're in New Brunswick, there are multiple people on that email. So if, if one assistant manager doesn't get it, another assistant manager will get it, or the guy in Newark will pick it up. And that's how we answer everything within 24 hours. Also, uh, just for people who don't know, uh, explain again about the problems with Amazon and how they drop, kind of literally drop ship anywhere they want. Okay. Why this causes a problem on the so, so it causes a problem with basically any university. So Amazon, they care about time. They don't care about if the package is going to the right place. Okay, so a lot of people see Amazon drivers out there. None of those drivers work for Amazon. They're all third party uh, contract employees. Okay, they get paid on time. They don't get paid if the package is delivered correctly. They get paid on how fast they could drop off a package. So that's why you see them throwing packages over fences and you know just dumping wherever. So one morning I came in and I saw Tom Stathouse in the woods in the back of the building. And I said, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm picking up all the Amazon packages that the driver just threw into the woods. Okay, so we also had, uh, we also got a call from the president's office. So Amazon walked into the president's office and dropped 27 packages off and said, well, it's your problem now and walked out. Bocce did not take kindly to that. <laughs> so we, uh, we worked with Amazon uh, to get these drivers off campus and now have them sh like either bulk ship to us in one shot or use UPS or FedEx or USPS. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, so routes are timed. So we know how long each route takes. So if you're taking three hours on one route, we know you're dilly-dallying, okay? So, so that's, how we, that's how we keep the flow going. You know, everyone knows their route, everyone knows how to keep their route going. Um, and that's, that's about it. The customer service people, they're in those post offices 
from morning to night, all day. Right. So the, the post office and the couriers know that we're not open. So we work very closely with them. So they will just deliver it the next business day, which is on Monday. Okay. So you're not getting the Amazon Prime is it for the Saturday or Sunday. Right. They they know. They know. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're going to order it on Monday, so you get it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>